In every market cycle, there is a peak and a trough. The peak represents the period where investors face the maximum financial risk, and a trough is where there is maximum financial opportunity. So why does it feel so hard to take on risk during bear markets? And does our human psychology work against us during these periods? My name is James Buccini, and on this channel I create content about digital assets and blockchain development. I'm not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. Do you think that Bitcoin is a riskier investment after a 3x bull run or a 50% pullback? During the bull markets, when Bitcoin's putting in the big green candles and your Uber driver's telling you about the latest meme coins, that's the point where there's a maximum financial risk and our brains are actually biased in the opposite direction because our recent memory bias is saying that risk equals greater returns. All the risks that we've taken in the past six months have panned out really well and we expect that to continue in the future. The same is true of bear markets, where our recent memory bias suggests that any risks that we take will not be financially rewarded. Further risk equals further ruin. And this creates a skewed cognitive bias where our perception of risk actually differs from the real risk during market cycles. At any time during a bull market, there will be people posting on Twitter and in the news saying that Bitcoin is going to go to the moon and it's going to go a 5x or a 10x from here. And the same people will be telling you in bear markets that Bitcoin's going to retrace to previous levels, whether that be 10k or 3k or it's going to zero. The main reason I wanted to look at this in closer detail was because in my own investment, I identified a leak where I haven't been rebalancing my portfolio as much as I do in bull markets. I also haven't been looking for new projects to invest in over the last few months. Since the beginning of the year, really, I haven't taken on any new investments and the investments that I already have, I haven't been rebalancing back to the target allocations. This has created a situation where my portfolio has passively risked off, but it's done it in a very inefficient way. If I wasn't willing to rebalance in positions, then probably no market participants were buying either. And I shouldn't have been in the position in the first place. This wasn't a conscious decision where I decided I wasn't going to keep rebalancing. It was just simply that I didn't, couldn't bring myself to sell Bitcoin and ETH to buy into an altcoin that had depreciated 20% relative to Bitcoin and Ethereum in the last 24 hours. Altcoins get absolutely wrecked in bear markets and this leads to our portfolios having a greater concentration of higher market cap assets and that creates a risk off portfolio because the higher caps don't have the same volatility and they don't capture the same upside when the market turns and we start getting the green candles again. The same is true I think of venture capital. I was speaking to a VC investor just last week who said that that kind of area has just dried up completely recently. There was an article on Cointelegraph as well, which I've linked to in the blog post, which mentioned that uh, venture capital doubled in 2021, but month on month, it's actually down 38%. For VCs, a lot of the risk comes in the lack of liquidity in the markets. They're taking large positions in illiquid tokens for new projects, and that liquidity only dries up further in bear markets. So should we be blindly buying out coins and allocating capital to high-risk digital assets during a bear market? Well, it's probably not optimal either. And the reason for this is that during the next bull market, when it eventually comes, there's going to be a whole new wave of new projects and emerging technologies, which are going to get more focused than the projects from the previous cycle. We've seen this already with some of the Ethereum killers. During 2017, 2018, there was EOS, which was marketed as a faster, more efficient, more scalable solution to smart contracts and an Ethereum competitor. Then in 2020, 2021, we saw the emergence of Solana. It had a very similar value proposition, but because the risk is always skewed to newer projects, because the risk and reward and the growth is better for something that's shiny and new, that got so much more traction than the project from the previous cycle. I think this is likely to continue not just with Ethereum killers but throughout the industry. The latest and greatest DeFi protocols, metaverse tokens, NFT projects, they're all going to gain more traction because people are always looking for that new thing and it becomes a race to allocate capital to the latest projects which have compelling use cases and potential for future growth. There's been a lot of research since the late 1970s about loss aversion and its effect on our human psychology. Essentially, this is focused around the fear of loss is a much more compelling reason to take action and the potential for gain. So this is believed to be a result of our evolution and it's been a favorable human trait over the years, but it doesn't really set us up well for trading and investing in modern financial markets. 
There's also a lot of knock-on effects such as status quo bias where people prefer things to stay as they are rather than to accept change. We see this a lot in older generations. Then there's some cost fallacy, which is I've already put so much in, so I'm going to put more in to avoid realizing that loss. And then there's the endowment effect, which is a greater need to retain an owned object and acquire that same object. So some object that we own is more valuable to us than something that we don't. And this is something we can look at quite closely in financial markets where something that's already part of our portfolio might stay in our portfolio longer than it should. Contrarian investing is the art of investing against market sentiment or the sentiment of the most market participants. So you're essentially you're trying to buy low and sell high. And what that sounds like perfect common sense is actually really tricky to do in practice. If you're trying to buy into the bottom and take on risk during a bear market, that's actually a really difficult thing to do. And then the same is true of trying to sell your assets in a bull market when so there might be kind of on-chain analysis saying that Bitcoin's gonna to go to $300,000 and it's gonna carry on going to the moon. During a bull market, there's a dopamine effect where the risk that we take are rewarded with financial gains. And that creates a very strong incentive not to kind of sell your portfolio and risk off. In the bear markets, there's a lot of downturn. People don't check their portfolios as regularly, don't rebalance as regularly, don't look for new projects that are up and coming in the space. And that causes us to take less financial risk when there's the maximum financial opportunity. The other thing that makes this so difficult is that consistently timing the market is almost impossible. But you don't necessarily need to time into the day, the week, or even the month. You can even kind of use a time weight average price and dollar cost average in over a period of time in the later stages of a bear market. Or you can put your bids in at key levels where you think there's a strong chance that price might rebound. For me, I need to have a long, hard look at my portfolio and decide what is likely to actually outperform Bitcoin over a kind of 10 year period, what is kind of become fundamental and going to continue to see greater growth than the overall crypto market. And also I need to keep looking for new projects in the space. It's during these kind of bear markets and in the early stages of bull markets where you get that out season kind of run up where there's really huge financial opportunities invested in new projects and looking for the, the latest and greatest emerging technologies. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please bear in mind it's not financial advice and I'm not a financial advisor. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in learning more about digital assets and blockchain development and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching.